So engineers ask why. So I want to ask, why do people use units? Then I want to introduce four common units for mass. People use units for quantification. Some examples of quantification. How large, as in how large is the force on the bridge? How much, as in how much water to fill a tank? How far, as in what's the distance to the next town? And here I've put a definition of quantification. It's the method for expressing or measuring the size or extent of something of interest. For example, quantifying distance. I might ask, how far did I walk? And I might say, I walked one mile. I might say I walked 5,280 feet. And these two ideas are exactly the same because one mile is the same as 5,280 feet. And similarly, I can say I walked 1.6 kilometers, which is the same as one mile, or I walked 1,600 meters, which is the same as one mile and 1.6 kilometers. So there's many different ways to express distance. So some facts about quantification. Number one, people create many different units for measuring the same thing. So for distance, people use miles sometimes, sometimes they use feet, inches, meters, centimeter, yards, and people always use whatever unit is the most convenient or familiar to them. The second key fact is that units can be related. One kilometer is the same as 1,000 meters. And we can write this using the equal sign. 1.0 km equals 1,000 m. One kilometer is the same as 1,000 meters. In my experience as an engineer, there's four really common mass units that are used. The kilogram, the gram, the slug, and the pound mass. Next. I'd like to give you a concrete example of the magnitude of the pound mass. This pint of half and half has a mass of very nearly one pound. Now what I like about this is you can hold this in your hand and get a feel for what one pound feels like. We can see that the length of the side is very nearly seven centimeters. So after I looked at that half and half, I said, what if we imagined a cube of water? And the cube of water was exactly one pound mass. Then what would the length of side need to be? And so the length here, here, and here are going to be the same. And how big is that? So I did the calculation. And the length of side is about three inches or 7.7 .7 centimeters. So here's my one pound mass of water. And it's a cube and I'm just showing the front face. And again, each side here is about three inches or 7.7 .7 centimeters. And we write the mass of this is 1.0 pound mass in words. But the way we write it as engineers is 1.0 LBM. So what if I have one kilogram of water? I would have one, two, point two of these cubes because one kilogram is exactly the same as 2.2 pounds mass. So if I had one slug of mass, I would actually need 32 of these cubes. One, two, three, plus two tenths of a cube because one slug of mass is the same as 32.2 pounds mass. So you can kind of think of a slug of mass as equivalent to the mass of 32 pints of water or 32 pints of half and half as we looked at in the video. Summary. I really recommend develop a physical sense about units. For example, one pound mass is the amount of mass very nearly in one pint of water. Or you can imagine a cube of water, as I've sketched here, about three inches or 7.7 .7 centimeters on a side. That amount of water will have a mass of one pound mass. One kilogram of mass 
is the same amount of mass as 2.2 pounds mass. Similarly, one kilogram is equivalent to a thousand grams of mass, and one slug of mass is the same amount of mass as 32.2 pound mass. By remembering a few conversion ratios such as these, it's possible to derive many other conversion ratios. For example, suppose I want to convert one slug of mass to kilograms. I'll write one slug equals one slug. Let me move this over a bit. Then I know that one slug is 32.2 pounds mass. So the slug will cancel here. And that 2.2 pounds mass, so the pound mass will cancel here, is the same as one kilogram. So I can see that one slug will equal 32.2 divided by 2.2, and the units will be in kilograms, because they're right here, all the other units canceled. 14.6 kilograms. Now I use this trick all the time. By remembering a few conversion ratios, I'm able to derive many more conversion ratios. That concludes this video. Hope you've enjoyed this.